We're doing something that nobody else would do with this particular project. And this is what investors need to understand. Mm -hmm. This is 100% gold oxide heat leach. There is no tailings. We have that skill set to be able to do it and to have the vision of what it be can become. We are completely different to other junior companies. We've got a full team here, geologists, financial people, mining people, uh, environmental people, social people. I mean, we can walk into a mine tomorrow and run it anywhere. We did create value, we can create value, and we will create value in this, in this company. Hello and welcome to Crux Investor. We spoke earlier today to Alex Black, who is the CEO of Rio2, the mining company with gold assets in Chile, not the movie. Some people seem quite upset with his plans to reduce the scale of the operation. We ask him why he's done it and also get him to explain his business model. Take a look in the description below to look at some of the topics we discuss. And if you click on the relevant timestamp, that'll take you to that part of the video. And of course, if I may ask you to click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to see more videos like this, please click the notification bell. Anyway, let's hear what Alex had to say. Hello, Alex, how are you, sir? Hey, you going, Matthew, how's things? Not too bad, not too bad. Thanks for uh, joining us today. You're gonna to tell us about Rio 2. You've got a jump on and I've got a nice uh, short sleeve shirt on because I'm down here in Lima, Peru. You're up there in uh, grey old London, so. So cold, uh, it's so cold. Um, I, I, I'm gonna be slightly tougher on you just because of that. Um, <laughs> so why don't we kick off? Give us a one minute story for people new to this story, if you may. Okay, well, Rio 2 is a, a mine um, building company, um, if I can say that. Um, we are mine developers. We built two mines in the last 10 years here in Peru, La Reina and Shawindo, uh, when we were at the old uh, Rio Alto. And uh, here we are again with a flagship project in Chile, mm -hmm. which is uh, very much a buildable proposition. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a large gold deposit. And um, obviously, in this uh, video, you'll, you'll learn more about it. Fantastic. Well, we hope we hope we hope to. Um, so you're in Peru and Chile. Um, you're after gold. I think the big should we go? Should we, let's, start, let's start with the big stuff. Um, share price. You've been absolutely hammered since 2008. Eight, yeah, right. 2017 for a long time. You know, you were the darling for a while. I, I do remember people talking about you a lot, but since then it's been on the downward slope. What, what's what's gone wrong? Well, I think you know, once you become a mine development company, uh, people's expectations change. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of people ask me the same question, and I, I, I'd say to people, well, look, if you're looking for the quick 10, 15, 20 percent increment in, in, in share price because of drill holes or drill results or expiration results, that's not us. Mm. We're actually in the process of getting a project ready to turn into a mine. Um, this happened, to a certain extent, this happened to us back in 2009 when we started Rio Alto. Mm -hmm. um, it took a, a lot of time to get traction in the market for people to understand and believe the story. Um, and then once, once we did, um, everything took off from there. So, you know, Rio Alto started as a $12 million uh, company when we acquired La Arena. And on the takeout with Tahoe Resources, we were $1.2 billion. So we did create value. We can create value and we will create value in this, in this company. Okay, so uh, yeah, I have seen the track record. It's pretty impressive. Those are, bit, those are big numbers, but you know, that's history. Let's, we've got to talk about today. What did you start off thinking you were going to build? What was the business plan day one? Okay, so what, what we did was when we acquired this asset, it had a uh, pre-feasibility study, which was put together in, uh, in 2014. Typical junior company pre-feasibility study, big project, big capex, big MPV, uh, everything big. Uh, why? Because they were never going to build it, and uh, they were looking to to, to flip it, and, and it never happened. So we looked at the asset and we said, well, you know, there's some analogies here between what we've seen at both La Reina and Shell Window, which we we both operated, built um, here in Peru, and we said. Look, the way we started those two projects 
was to start small and incrementally build up. And we created a lot of value doing that. So going from a $400 million capex in the original pre-feasibility study done in 2014 to our capex today, which is about $110, $115 million is a big change, but it's completely doable now from because of that uh, gearing down of the particular project. So we've, with La Reina and Shell Window, we geared down right at the beginning. We had some, you know, we had we had the opportunity to build some pretty reasonable sized projects, which they eventually got to, but we started small, and we're going to do the, exactly the same. So let me just may understand the, the the timeline here. So 2014, it was another management team had done this PFS. Yeah, Adekama, yeah. let me give you a quick Please. preview of the story. Atacama Pacific discovered this asset in 2010. Mm. Uh, it was a you know, a geological discovery. Um, uh, Albert Schneider and uh, and Carl uh, Carl Hansen, who were the two principals of Atacama Pacific, they drilled this thing out, and uh, lo and behold, bang! You know, they they hit pay dirt and uh, cobbled together a reasonable sized resource. And um, you know, the the problem they had was because they were exploration geologists, they just didn't have the ability to then take it that step further mm -hmm. and that's part of the issue with the market these days is that a lot of companies out there with some good geologists but at some point they need to step aside and let a mine development team come in and take the take the project and the company forward uh, after they've done with it because just there's too many disasters of people that just don't know what they're doing in this industry so um, in our case we identified this opportunity we thought that this was right down our alley being a gold oxide heat bleach project and and uh, we acquired it and and convinced them that they should be doing a deal with us. Right, so what, so what we've seen is a, uh, the previous exploration team came up with a very large uh, capex number to build out a, a large scale mine. You've come in um, and I've seen this model work elsewhere with people like Rocks Gold in West Africa where you say well let's start smaller, get some cash flowing and then we can build it out from there. So this is more like a phase one you're talking about rather than exactly. defining the mine. We, we, try to, we, we try not to call it a starter, starter project or anything but, but essentially it is. I mean it's a starter, a starter view of the project and I think that's what's not translated through to the market is the market's gone oh shit you know you've got five million ounces of gold here um but you're going to build this really tiny project you know why are you doing that and so um once again typically a junior company would drill this thing keep drilling it we've got 1.4 million ounces of inferred resources here that we could pull a drill rig up to tomorrow start drilling and convert most of that to indicated but why would we do that we've already got five million ounces of mni uh, as you know, before we even get to that point. So we're all about building mines, and mm. that will translate to value down the track. Okay, but it, you know, it's one thing saying it, the market doesn't understand, but the reality is that's your fault. You haven't explained it properly, and that's why I ask management teams, "What is your business plan?" Now you have, in two or three minutes, told me everything I need to know about what your business plan. I think. And you know, yeah, and, I think, and, and, I, and you know, I, I buy it. You know, let's get into early when cash. I say, when I say the market, when I say the market, um, you know, we started off with a, um, you know, reasonable valuation when we when we when we when we did the Atacama transaction. We then then ran into this bad market. We raised about seven million dollars back in uh, February of of two thousand and nineteen. Um, we had to we had to put money together because we had to advance the project. So that was done very cheaply. Not you know what can we do? I mean, you've got to go with the market. The market says you're worth thirty cents at the time, whatever it was, and we took the money. And then later on in uh, in um, uh, August of last year, we did another financing. This time it was a twenty five million dollar financing. Um, that financing was led by Eric Sprott, and um, uh, a whole bunch of people came into that financing with Eric. You know, when I say a whole bunch of people, people that I don't even know, I mean, they're mainly retail followers of him. And so they're the people that don't understand what they're getting into. I mean, they follow Eric um, and they're, you know, Eric typically gets into stories that are, um, are uh, expiration stories, putting out, 
you know, drill holes and things like that. We're not one of those. Okay. Uh, he bought us because he could see us as being a little bit different to to those other stories that he's been into. So the crowd that follows him watches that and goes, well, where's all the, where's all the juice here? Where's all the sexiness here? Okay. And um, all, all the sexiness happened back when this thing was discovered. Now we're going to build it. As you probably know, um, in, the, in the life cycle of a, uh, of a development company, this is the quiet time because here we go leading ourselves into into the construction phase of the project okay anyway, yeah so let, let, let's let's come back to eric because i think that's quite an interesting topic with it, that you've just spoken about let's go through some of the numbers so you have taken the pfs and said we're going to create a feasibility study we're going to reduce the scale of of this project just to get things going so you you have managed to lower things like the carpax down to you know from whatever it's 400 down to 100 Strip ratios lower, the, the IRR is slightly higher. Um, the ASIC's gone up, right? I yes. guess that's by dint of you haven't got the scale there. Because you're, you're talking about, and let's be clear, this is a low grade bulk tonnage operation. And, and specifically, we're talking about, I presume, one of those mountains behind you on the wall, are we? Well, there's three, there's three weeks there. Yeah. Uh, that. One, two, three. Yeah. And, um, and basically, uh, we'll be mining all three of those. This is an extinct volcano. Yeah. Uh, and you can see, I hope you can see that project, uh, that photo clearly. But what, what I see here is I see uh, um, terrain that is very accessible um, and everything outcrops its surface. So we're just knocking the tops of those hills off. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing and it's very simple. Right. So again, let's, so let's come back. Let's answer the question that the markets are asking you, which is: in a bull gold bull market, prices fifteen hundred bucks or so. I know your ASIC's about a thousand. There's money to be made. Surely you can go out easily and raise capital. You can you can put it back. You can raise money at the original PFS levels, can't you? Oh, I think I think we can get the money to build this asset. Uh, the good thing is. You know, we raised $25 million in August. That money will will last us all the way through, and we're going to make it last us all the way through to EIA approval. Uh, we're about to file our EIA in the next um, few weeks, um, and then we're anticipating approval about 12 months after that. Now, once we've got that, um, we will be in a position to look at raising more money and obviously taking a lot of the risk out of any development project is getting the EIA. Right. So, um, but the question was the question was different. The question was in a gold bull market, fifteen hundred bucks yes. or so, you're making five hundred yes. bucks um, an ounce here. You yes. you are still going with a smaller project. Why? Because we're a seventy million dollar valuation. <laughs> we're a seventy million dollar company. I mean, if we were a five hundred million dollar company, maybe we would we would go harder at this. But one of the key constraints that we're dealing with here in Chile is water, right? There, and 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 let me just clarify this because it's not as though there is a lack of water. There's plenty of water. We're right, right near to the uh, Maracunga Salar. Mm -hmm. There's no mining going on in this district, right? There's plenty of water rights in this district. The issue is. Applying for water rights is one thing, but getting permitted water rights, which means you can pull water from the rights that you've been given, is another thing. And that's the issue in Chile. That's been generally created by a, a big demand on water further to the north of us near the Atacama Salar, which is, which is way, way to the north of us, um, and where you have all the big guys, you know, the, the, um, the Cadelcos with... Um, and, and, the, and the Rio Tintos and BHPs with Escondida, with Chukicamada, et cetera, et cetera. There's been a huge drain on water supplies in those areas. And so the government's gone, whoa, 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 you know, let's, let's just slow down here. But it's applied the slowing down to the whole country as far as water is. Okay, so, and it doesn't answer the question. Are you able to go and have conversations with institutions, funds, or strategic partners to to give you more money to do the larger project, yes or no? Or are you telling me that because of the water constraints, people are not minded 
to fund you at, at, for the larger level project? Because I'm just trying to answer the question which is being most asked about. Yeah, yeah no, it's, a, it's a good question. So if we had the water rights um, and we had permanent water rights for 80 litres a second, which would satisfy an 80,000 tonne a day uh, mine, we would, we would probably try and aim to build that. Once again, constrained by our balance sheet and by the size of our company, we're a junior company. So um, what we've done is we've elegantly, I think, looked at how we expedite the startup of this project without getting uh, entwined in this water rights, water permitting issue, and that is to truck the water from Kopiapo to the project. Got now, it. 140 kilometers, and we can do that. It raises our ASIC to about $1,000 an ounce, as, you, as you've, uh, as you've uh, pointed out. And that's at the moment. I think we're going we're gonna to show that we can work on bringing that ASIC down as we get closer to and into production. But um, the idea is to bring enough water up and 20,000 20, 20, tonnes a day requires about 2,000 tonnes of water. So it's about 10% of the mineral that you put on the pad is required to be irrigated on the pad. So we need to bring up 2,000 tonnes a day of water from Copiapo. And we can do that in trucks, in tankers. We've costed it out. It's about $1.50 a tonne. That's haulage costs, water costs, all in costs to drive from Copiapo to the project 140 kilometres. Imminently doable. A lot of people go, but how do you do that? Why are you bringing water up in trucks? I mean, it's like any other consumable. We're going to bring fuel up in trucks. We're going to bring explosives up in trucks. We're going to bring everything up in trucks. And there's a major uh, international road that goes from Copiapo to Argentina that goes within 15, 18 kilometres of, our, of, of the mine, right, of this peak. So, um, you know, the infrastructure is fantastic. And so bringing up trucks is not an issue. And I want to say that because I've had a lot of people go, well, the only pushback here is the water. And I said, well, why? Because we've got a solution for water. 20,000 tonnes a day, 2,000 tonnes of water, got to come up the road every day, imminently doable. And uh, we've costed it, we've worked it out, and it's being built into our EIA. What it does do is it speeds up the EIA process because we're not pulling water out of the ground. So we're going to have an EIA approved according to our consultants and according to all the uh, officials that we've been talking to, the authorities, etc. We'll have an EIA pr um, approved within about 12 months. And that's running fast in Chile, right? If you look at our, you know, the, the latest EIA that was approved in Chile, it was for Solaris Norte, a big gold project belonging to Goldfields, which was I don't know, 150 kilometres to the north of us. Um, they got that approved in 18 months, but that involved tailings deposition, involved permitted water, very complex project in comparison to what we have. So that's what it's all about. In this market, and you're right, gold's 1,500, but how long is it going to be 1,500? Well, it could be more than 1,500, obviously. But, you know, um, the idea is to get to production as quickly as possible. That's what will create value for us and enable us to increase production from our initial production rate of maybe 100,000 ounces per annum to plus 200,000 ounces yeah. per annum. Yeah, always. The way to do that, mm -hmm. get started. Yeah, I, I agree. Look, okay, so back to the model. So I understand the model. You've been very clear what your model is. Get into get into production as early as possible to generate cash. You've got to get into economic production, not just production. Okay. Um, so yeah. just just and I know water is the big issue that people keep talking about. But let's let's just cover it off and move on because you know so you've probably talked about this more than you want to over the past year or so. So you're trucking water up. I don't know how many trucks that is and how many uh, times a day. That I'll tell you right now, very quickly. Twenty five trucks. Uh, going up three times a day. So it's 75, essentially 75 trucks. We're going to have physically about 25 trucks in a fleet. Yeah. That'll be contracted out. And that means a truck leaving Copiapo essentially 
every 20 minutes. Right. So the only thing I'm thinking as an investor, I'm, all I'm concerned about, what does that add to the bottom line? And it's added a bit. You've said it has. Um, I'm more concerned, and I imagine you know, institutional investors are concerned with this interim, this temporary solution um, is over strikes or you know the towns and villages that you go through not liking 75 trucks going through each day uh, every right. day good, good point good so point. there are no yeah okay <laughs> you know, no, 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 good point so we'll be we'll be bringing the trucks up to the project and depositing the water we're not going to build a separate reservoir we're going to be depositing the water in the major events pond the major events pond is secondary to your um, mm-hmm. uh, leach pond that, that, that accumulates the uh, uh, pregnated uh, uh, cyanide that you're going to put through the plant. Um, the major events pond will will have a capacity of about two weeks of water, right? So we will make sure that before we start this project, we fill the major events pond up and we keep it filled up, which means we therefore have two weeks of water. So if there's uh, a weather a weather can, um, event whether there's a, uh, a labor event or something like that, we believe that will that will uh, be a way of mitigating uh, those events. Well, two two weeks of events, right? Sometimes these things can go on, whether it's natural causes or or people protesting or otherwise. And let's face it, in that part of the world, that happens a lot, right? So I appreciate well, that. Did, uh, yeah, well, hang on, wait, 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 wait. Good point. However. During the latest uh, unrest that happened in Chile, mining was not stopped anywhere in the country. All right, and the road uh, between Copiapó and where we are was never um, barricaded or anything like that for any reason. Um, right. So just letting you know. That. Okay, good, good. Um, so this is an interim solution, which, which obviously because the length of time you were saying it possibly takes to do business in country, um, you will be applying for the full permitted water license whilst this is going on, is that right? What we've guided is we're looking at the longer term water options and there's plenty of, there's people building desalination uh, projects um, in the the coast, Um, they're looking for clients, they're looking for end users, Um, the, the, the offtake we have with the water retreatment facility in Copiapó owned by Aguas Chanyar, um, we have the right to access up to 80 litres a second, which is for the bigger project. We're pulling 20 litres a second essentially initially and, uh, and putting into trucks. We could build a pipeline from Aguas Chanyar to the project. That's still a possibility. Um, we may do that in consortium with other people doing business in the area. Uh, Cadelco have just mentioned that they're going to uh, um, apply for expiration rights over the Maracunga Salar for lithium. Mm-hmm. There's going to be quite a lot of activity in that area. Having Cadelco, the biggest co- uh, mining company in the in the country, uh, as our neighbour, is going to be a good thing. We believe um, so. There there are options that are in the background that we're working on, and as we bring this thing into production we'll be able to say, okay, um, we're in production now and in year two, we're going to tap into this water X, whatever it is, um, and we're going to increase production uh, accordingly. So that's how we see it playing out. Okay. Um, but I just don't have those solutions today you know, ready. Okay, so at that point, you're gonna to have to reapply for an EIA uh, permit, presumably. Oh, uh, you do a modification. You do a modification. And that's a good right. thing. You know, modifications of EIAs take you know six to eight months, typically. You know, we've done quite a lot of research on on, on mm-hmm. this, and so once you've got your first EIA, um, then it becomes a much easier process to modify and, and, and do things. Right. The good thing here is, and this is what investors need to understand, mm-hmm. this is one hundred percent gold oxide heat leach. There is no tailings. There is no complex sulfide transition zone, etc. This is going to be gold oxide heat leach, which means no tailings dam. Only ever going to be a leach pad. So all the modifications we do to the EIA will be relatively simple in comparison to this transitioning into a major sulfide project or a um, you know complex project with copper and other things. There's no copper here. 
You know, so this is an anomaly in the Marikunga region. This deposit is an anomaly because all the other gold deposits in the Marikunga are associated with copper, complex metallurgy, huge capex, and um, and complexity. No, I get, I get that. So just again, just looking at the terrain there, um, how are you getting power to site using diesel or you got yep. another okay, solution? So same thing. Same thing. Uh, there's a power line within 15 kilometers of this, of this uh, project. But instead of tying ourselves to the power line, going through the negotiations, including that in the EIA, which will delay startup of this project, we said to ourselves, we're going to start this with gensets, which we did with La Reina, which we did with Shell Window here in Peru. Gensets, will, once you tie into the grid, maybe in year one or two of, of production, gensets then become backup power. So we're going to start with gensets and uh, bring diesel up and uh, power it that way. But there is a, um, a power line um, 18 kilometers. And how does this work? Because I've got to look at um, similar projects elsewhere in the world. The people controlling the water, people controlling the energy, they put the prices up you know, at, at their discretion and that has a big impact on your costs. So what's it like in country with regards to power, well, water, in, elsewhere? In the case of water, We've got a fixed cost on water, so you know there's there's no in, you know there's no inflation built into the cost of of the water that we're pulling. We're we're actually using retreated sewage, mm -hmm. which is good, which is good from a from a, from a leaching perspective. Probably mm -hmm. you know for other allergical perspectives it may not be, but for leaching it's okay. Um, and so we've got a fixed price. Energy anywhere in the world, people can. You know, energy used to be a huge problem in Chile years ago, and, and now it's stabilised and there's much more power available on the grid. Um, um, but, um, you know, typically if, if, if um, you know, oil prices go up, gold prices move and, and other things. So, yeah, I mean, they're, they're things that we just have to watch and, and build into into our models as we, as we go forward. Okay, how much how much money have you pumped into this project so far? Actual cash? You've talked to me about seven million and twenty five uh, million so far in cash, but how much did you pay? Well, oh, we just did a share transaction. So we did we did a business combination with Atacama Pacific. Um, mm -hmm. We paid them a premium. Well, they were lucky because these days nobody pays for premiums. Um, but um, uh, it was all paper. Um, we we have raised in total so far, I'm just trying to do the math, 17, uh, about um, 40 odd million dollars Canadian uh, of money from the time we started Rio, Rio 2. Hmm. Um, and, um, and, and here we are. You know, uh, what are you sitting on today? How much cash are you sitting on today? Uh, today about 13 million US. Okay. Okay. So you spent spent about forty. Your market cap's about seventy five ish, seventy six ish. You got about thirteen million in the bank. You spent a bit of. You, well, I mean, and thirty, and we're mixing currencies here because um, oh. our market value is thirty million. But uh, you know, the, the, let's say it's fifteen million or sixteen million Canadian in cash sitting in the bank. Canadian in cash sitting in the bank. Okay, and you've so, so what's so what's happening this year that's going to change this direct the direction the share price is going in. Are you going to spend that on talking to the market more, well, or well, have you, what are you going to deliver? Two, two things is obviously we we are going to be telling the story a lot more. I mean, we've just come out of the Christmas New Year period. Um, we came out with our uh, PFS updated PFS in in August September. We did you know the two shows in Colorado. We went to uh, New York last year. Uh, we're going to be going to Zurich this year to the Denver Forum in Zurich. Uh, in April, we're going to be doing London, Frankfurt, you know, so we're going to be marketing, we're going to be telling people the same story I'm telling you right now. And um, uh, so so that's one thing we'll be doing. From a news perspective, um, we will be filing the EIA towards the end of the quarter. Mm -hmm. um, that is worthy, of course, you know, uh, uh, that's a major milestone. Um, we've just we're also in the process of completing all our um, basic engineering for for the project. Um, that will will be able to reveal how that looks, what tweaks we've done to the look of the project, and and trade it off on opex capex to uh, to get to that point. Um, 
we will start to talk to um, uh, financiers about the project uh, once we get the complete uh, overview of the project that is filed in the EIA um, to present to, to financiers. So um, we'll be doing that. We also, um, we also uh, are, are refining our agreement with Aguas Chanyar, which will be to, the, to our benefit, and we'll be announcing that at some point. Uh, we are also um, looking at the future of, of tying into the grid. We'll be announcing things about that. That won't be for the startup of the project, but for the, the longer term future. And we'll talk about the impacts to OPEX uh, and, 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 and future sustaining CAPEX that we'll need to do those various things. Right. I mean, that, that just sounds like every other story we hear every week. I mean, what, what is, what's yeah. there for? <laughs> I'm trying to help you stand out here. I'm trying to work out what, <laughs> what do I need to hear that says this guy knows where this thing's going, right? So, you know, we look at people like Equinox, right? They, they yeah. kind of quite cleverly brought together three quite quite ordinary projects and, and did something quite big. You're in a you know district wide scale. You've got Kinross behind you who aren't doing too much at the moment. Um, and you're surrounded by some other big names. So and you've got Eric Sprott involved in this thing. So you know why aren't you offering up a big a bigger vision? Um, uh, we we've, we've been talking about a bigger vision and the bigger vision is to consolidate ourselves with other companies. Um, you know, we've, we've got a management team that's second to none. You t well, you, know, you certainly created, have. You certainly have. So yeah, let's we, do we've something created, with it. We've, and, and let me tell you, for the last three years, apart from doing this acquisition, for the last three years, we've been looking at lots of things. We are completely different to other junior companies. We've got a full team here, geologists, financial people, mining people, uh, environmental people, social people. I mean, we can walk into a mine tomorrow and run it anywhere, anywhere. And the other thing that we come with is our capital markets experience because, you know, I've been doing this for the last you know, 20 years or so um, at the front end of, of companies. So, um, you know, we've got all the ingredients, but you think there are people out there that, you know, us plus them would look interesting, just like what Equinox has done with legal, et cetera. And let me tell you, it's just so difficult, so difficult. And uh, there is entrenched management, lack of management in various companies with skin in the game like we have. But you try and convince them that putting them together with us um, would make a lot of sense for um, the future of the company and also for, for shareholders. And it's like, you might as well be talking to a rock. No, I, I get that everyone's protecting their own jobs and their own income and so forth. But you've got Eric Sprott there. He's a big player. He's a wealthy guy. He's yeah. involved with a yeah. lot of juniors. He's, he's been spreading the cash the last uh, six to nine months, right? So what's someone like him seeing in you? Is there something we need to know? Or, you, or is it, as you tell me, you've tried, but there's nothing out there? No, I mean, well, we continue to try. I mean, we, we may come up with something in the next short little while that um, uh, everybody goes, wow, well, that's, that's, you know, you've made the right move. Um, all I'm saying is until now, it's, it's been difficult. With Eric, um, you know, he's backing a management team. Um, he's invested in a lot of things. At some point, those things have to perform. My reckoning is that they're either going to perform or he's potentially going to be a catalyst for consolidation, right? Because, you know, you can have X number of investments, but if they don't perform, it's like, well, why don't I reduce the size of that pool to, um, you know, by a factor of two or three and put things that have synergies or, um, you know, uh, uh, focuses that, 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 that could be combined. And maybe that's what he's going to do. I mean, he hasn't really said anything about that, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping he does that because um, at the end of the day, that's what this this business needs: is consolidation. But the industry as a whole definitely needs that. I think there's there's a lot of small companies, you know, flailing around, not really knowing what they're doing, other than drill, drill, drill. But they don't have the and money. You know what interests me? You know what interests me as well is that here we are. We've been trying very hard to look at consolidation. Do you mm -hmm. think 
anybody has come to me to say, why don't you consolidate with us? Not one person has done that. That shows you the state of this business. That's why it comes back to Mr. Sprott. I, I understand that because that's job pro, pro, job protection. But when it comes back to Mr. Sprott, he's got option money in a lot of small players here. And at some point, as you say, it makes sense that he's got to pull the trigger because the funds. There's a lot of fundamentally good assets. There's some very average management, and then there's some exceptional management. I think yeah. I think your track record speaks for itself. So that's why I'm interested to, one, hear the story for the first time and share it with our viewers on the show, but hear from you what you, what you can do to influence that move forward. And again, what I'm hearing is it's get into production early or earlier than you originally planned and get some cash flowing. Get into production that anybody else would, would do with this project, right? If this was in the hands of Kinross, they wouldn't be doing what we're doing, right? If it was in the hands of anybody bigger, they wouldn't be doing what we're doing. They'd be looking at what impact can we make 200,000 plus ounces a year, et cetera. So we're, do we're doing something that nobody else would do with this particular project. But we did the same, and you've got to go back, you know, and I keep harping, I keep mentioning La Reina and Shawindo. We did that there. We started those projects very small. La Reina was 10,000 tonnes a day to start with, focused on high-grade outcropping material, which is exactly what we have here. Mm. And so, um, you know, we we have that skill set to be able to do it and to have the vision of what it be, can become. What the market will eventually do, and this happened with Rio Alto, the ma market will eventually gel with that and go, yeah, I want to be in this story. The problem is that we're not in production yet. So the, the closer we get to production, the more the, the interest and value will come into the story because everybody will doubt our ability to do this, right? Irrespective, we've done it twice before. That's just the nature of the market. People go, oh, well, can you do this? You've never built a mine in Chile, have you? Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things, and I'm very pragmatic. I've been in the business 40 years. I've been on the front end of the business for 20 years. Uh, I'm a technical guy. I'm a mining engineer. And all I do, you know, I've got a great team of people behind this wall here, mm -hmm. great team of people, second to none here in Latin America. And all I do is say, just focus on what we've got to do. Let's just show people that um, what we've been telling them for the last piece of time we actually deliver on and that's all we can do is deliver and execute on what we say we shall see alex thanks for telling us the you story will, today you will be, and you'll be standing on the top of that hill with me drinking a beer one day uh as we're watching trucks soon on and uh, i'll say see matthew i told you I hope that happens. I hope that happens. Look, Alex, I do appreciate you telling that story. It was great to kind of get you to articulate what the plan is and why you're doing in this order. I can understand that now. I think you've got to get out there and tell the story in an articulate way to the marketplace because your share price says no one understands it. Okay. Um, Eric Sprott coming on board, great new addition. Um, I look forward to seeing your, you know, how your relationship with him de develops and um, stay in touch, sir. All right, and I, I, I just want to say that I like the way you ask questions. The, the tenor of the questions that you ask are really good. I think it really suits um, people that are maybe not so knowledgeable about mining. Um, so you're doing a great job and keep doing it and uh, look forward to following up and once again look forward to having the beer on the top of the hill there. All right. <laughs> you got it. Thanks Alex. Cheers.